Hello and welcome to the Thursday, July 27th, 2023 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Personally, I have often stated I'm not a big fan of sort of IP address block lists. There is a lot of, uh, well, uh, suspect sort of evidence that's sometimes being used to create these block lists. But well known that many good guys, but also bad guys are blocking traffic to specific IP addresses. Xavier looked at the specific malware sample to figure out, well, uh, the particular IP addresses that are being blocked here what they have in common and uh, how they are actually being used. Turns out a lot of uh, cloud providers are being listed here in this particular sample. Could be that attackers are suspecting that maybe there are some sort of analysis systems at these IP addresses, or maybe just that they don't consider these particular cloud providers valid or worthwhile targets for the particular malware given that you know malware often does uh, target client systems so they're less likely going to be located in these cloud environments overall i think same applies to the bad guys as to the good guys that sometimes uh, these block lists are not necessarily built out of like solid and robust evidence, but more or less some anecdotal evidence where maybe a particular attacker had a bad experience with a particular IP address. End-to-end encryption for messaging systems has been sort of a hot topic these last few years, like with various offerings from companies like Signal. Google now stated that it will implement end-to-end encryption, but it will actually be based on an open standard. RFC 9420, it was published this month, defines a messaging layer security protocol or MLS protocol that's supposed to become a standard when it comes to end to end encryption. Well, earlier this week, I sort of talked about a disaster with the Tetra radios and some of the proprietary uh, issues around there that uh, kind of exaggerated or at least uh, enabled uh, that particular problem. Having transparency for these kind of protocols is always great. I'm not enough of an expert to figure out if this MLS protocol is sound. It does appear to address some important problems, like, for example, also the need for end-to-end encrypted group messages, which is always a little bit tricky how you are then coming up with keys in these uh, group messaging systems. Interesting approach, and we'll see where it goes with uh, Google and, uh, well, hopefully others will pick up on this standard too. And if there is a problem with it, I hope we'll see some review of the standard and some fixes then deployed for it. And if there's a topic that also requires a little bit more sort of public scrutiny, then it is security patches being released without actually labeling them as security patches. This is a problem that a couple of researchers from George Mason Mason University looked at, and they published a paper stating that only about 40% of the security patches being committed to Python projects are actually being called out as security patches. In order to bring some light into this issue, they started something called the PySec database, essentially a database of security commits that then can be downloaded, can be searched in order to help users understand if a particular update to a particular Python project does have specific security content. Of course, not declaring the security content and often leads to patches not being applied because nobody really knows that these patches are fixing critical or important security issues. And then we have yet another info stealer for Max. Uh, this particular software that Sentinel One is talking about, they're calling it Rails or Reels. It's written in Rust, but also contains some Python components, depending on the exact version that you're downloading. Nothing really sort of terribly new here. It's arriving as a fake game that the user willingly installs despite any warnings that may pop up. Of course, not necessarily blocked by 
Apple's antivirus system. It appears to be already sort of getting ready for the next version of macOS Sonoma, according to some strings being included here. But this may actually, in my opinion, just be sort of an artifact because of them using sort of the up-to-date development tools, which already sort of uh, may include some references to Sonoma to become ready for this new and upcoming operating system overall nothing to be really too terribly concerned about don't install games from shady websites even if they do offer support via a discord channel or have a twitter account and yes some of the malware did arrive in the form of modified electron uh, software well uh, this is it for today thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow Bye.